Welcome to Jocelyn's lamp disaster. She was making the bed, the lamp was on the bedside table, and a minute later, it was on the floor. I'm sure we can all relate. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to fix this. And stay tuned and we'll see if we can't get this working again. Welcome back. Today we had some good news, some bad news, some good news. The good news is a lamp repair project fell into my lap very unexpectedly. The bad news is the lamp did not literally fall into my lap. It literally fell onto Jocelyn's bedroom floor. Ouch. The good news is we're not only going to be able to fix it, we're actually going to be able to make it better. So let me start with, um, maybe you noticed I changed my clothes, and that's because I started off this project without you. And I am sorry for that, but the first part of this was fixing the shade. Now if you'll recall from the introduction, this framework was bent out of shape very badly. It was distorted and racked and it needed to be fixed, which I did, with this. Now this is my small hammer. It's about two and a half pounds. It's light enough so that it can be easily used, heavy enough so that it can really bang on metal. Um, the medium hammer, by the way, is seven pounds and the big hammer is a 20 pound sledge that needs two hands. And frankly, I can wield these things like the mighty Thor. I don't get to take credit for that. That is in my DNA. It's the result of 60 generations of Viking inbreeding. So you give me a hammer and I will show you why the Franks gave us Normandy. Seriously. But that is not a beginning how-to video. It's extremely dangerous. And at some point, we are going to see if we can find some lampshades with less serious damage, and we will work our way up to something like this. But right now, I, I don't want to try to encourage you to do something that could end up getting you hurt. Now, the reason getting this shade fixed was so important is this is a beautiful mid-century shade. It, it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. And... One of the things that makes this a great shade is also one of the things that made it very difficult to beat back into shape. And that's these little ridges here. If you'll notice, it has a center hole so that it can go over a standard lamp harp and get secured down with a finial. But it also has these ridges. I'm going to show you what they are for. This is a torchere shade. Now a torchere is a tall, slim lamp that has an upright socket and a bulb. And you would use this kind of shade on that lamp and the light would simply flow upward. Now, this shade, the inner set of ridges fit it perfectly. You can just, I mean, this is very secure. And the outer set of ridges will accommodate a larger torchere shade. So this is extremely versatile, and it's 19 inches in diameter. Consequently, a shade like this is very valuable. Um, I would hesitate to put a price on it, but I can tell you that brand new reproduction shades of this sort are selling for 60 or $70, and people are buying them at those prices. This is a genuine vintage fiberglass shade from the 50s. And, oh yeah, it's worth a lot. I asked Jocelyn what she paid for it, and she told me she got it on a lamp uh, some years ago and just can't recall. But I promise you, she didn't pay that kind of money for it, so it was a good bargain. But still, valuable shade needed to be dealt with, and hopefully we will get into that at some point in the future. But for today, we're dealing with the lamp 
and this is how I got it. This part of the lamp, there is a fitting in here, and it was sheared right off. So the first thing we have to do is take this lamp apart and check the cord, because whenever you have a situation where you have raw metal edges, that could have cut into the cord, and that's dangerous. Uh, that could actually start a house fire. So we have to deal with that first and foremost. So we're just going to take this apart. Oh, here, let me show you. This has a housing that is holding the wiring, and it has two little screws on the bottom. If this were sitting upright, those screws would be on the underside where they can't be seen. And so what we are doing is just opening that up. You know what? I'm actually going to lay this down on its side on a towel so it doesn't roll anywhere because it might make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is take this housing apart. It secures with two little screws on the underside. And once we get that out, we're going to be able to uh, take it apart and pull the wires apart. Um, the wires are secured and we're going to be, oh no, got to loosen that a little more. We're going to be taking those wires apart and then checking the length of the cord to make sure there's no breakage, that the insulation is all intact and that we don't feel any cuts or scrapes on the cord. If we do, and I don't know yet because I, I'm taking this apart for the first time, if we do feel cuts or scrapes, what we're going to have to do is replace the cord um, because I'm not too crazy about the idea of losing Jocelyn to a house fire. You know, that would just, boy, that would be unpleasant. So, this out. All right. Now, our wire is running up through this pipe here. Now it was secured with wire nuts. So we're just going to loosen the nuts. Oh, and not lose them. Okay, we didn't. All right, good. And then we're just going to untwist the wires and setting that aside. The next thing we're going to do is try to straighten these wires out a little because they're going to have to be pulled back through the cord, or I'm sorry, back through the rod and then reinserted, which is not going to be easy if they are uh, all curled up at the end. We're going to need these wires to be reasonably straight now. Scoot that through. That's our upper portion. This is our lower portion. And this, I'm going to pull some more cord through here. Okay, this is the fitting that got sheared off in the break. Now, I had considered whether or not I wanted to replace this fitting with exactly the same kind of fitting. Here it is, two pieces right here, and this is what it looked like. I decided I was going to replace it with exactly the same fitting. The reason for that is I'm going to treat this like a, a stress crack in a sidewalk. The vase didn't break. That was a good thing. The shade got racked but not damaged. That's a not so good thing but not so bad either. This is a 30 cent fitting. This is where the stress hit hardest. So my hope is that if I put 
the same fitting back. If the lamp falls again, it'll break in the same way. A 30 cent fitting that can easily be replaced. So, first thing we're going to do is check for breaks in the insulation. As I said, that, that's a major issue because that area was very rough. Um, let me see if I can show you that right here. And it's literally sheared off metal. And I don't want to handle it too much because I'll end up cutting myself. And that's what I'm afraid might have happened to the cord, but it didn't. Okay, so far so good. So the first thing we're going to do is put the replacement fitting back on. Now this fitting, it's called a coupler. Here's another one. This is how a coupler works. You screw it on to a piece of threaded pipe. There's another piece of threaded pipe. It joins the two together and now you have, and this is strong, this is not something that's going to break easily, although it did. Well, I mean, it broke. We don't know what kind of force it took to put that lamp on the ground, but the hope is that next time around, it'll just do the same thing. The fitting will go, the lamp will not. Now this, if you'll recall, was our vase cap. If you take a look at this, I don't know if you can see. I'm going to try to find you an angle where you can see. It's a little bent here. That is not going to be a problem because this piece is just going to force it back down. All right. So our buzz cap is going back on. And with this a little so it ends up going through. Okay. Actually, I did that backwards. This should have gone on next. This, this is just a little piece of threaded rod that is being used in conjunction with another coupler to hold the whole piece together. Now that was not broken. So now we're good to go. So you got to see my mistake there. Let's hope we don't make any more. Now this, if you'll recall, was just a decorative spacer. It's going to take up a little room here. Everything seems to be falling out of my hands today. This is another coupler. Now, if you'll notice, some of these couplers are a little more decorative than others. The reason for that is I wanted something pretty up here at the top, which is going to be visible. Um, not that the other ones aren't pretty, but they're just not quite as decorative. Now, 
this one is going on. Now at this point, the lamp will be tightening up. Yes, she says, as it refuses to tighten up. Okay, there we go. Now we're good. Now, as I tighten this up, I'm going to align the vase cap to make sure it's exactly where I want it to be. And then as I tighten this down, that little bend in the top of the vase cap is going to get forced back into line. And I can do that just with this because it's thin brass and it gives easily. I wish the shade had given so easily. Now we are feeding this back through the housing. There we go. And see, that's why I wanted to straighten out these little tails at the top because it wouldn't do us a whole lot of good if we got the wiring caught up in there simply because there was a little curl in the wire. All right. Okay, we are good and tight now. Okay, now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna show you how to make a UL knot. This is actually interesting, and I'm sorry Jocelyn isn't here for it, because we're going to make mouse ears, and you know how she loves animals. Okay, I just made a loop, bent it around, and I have the tail in the back. See, around, tail in the back. This loop, around, tail in the front. Front tail goes through the loop toward the back, back tail goes through the loop toward the front. Tie it off. That's your UL knot. I'm going to do it again. Just because it's mouse ears. Okay. Loop. Tail in the back. Loop. Tail in the front. Back tail through the front. Front tail through the back. Tie it off. Done. Okay. And as I say, I'm sorry Jocelyn isn't here because anything involving mouse ears was certain to catch her fancy. And now we're going to wire this. And if you look at your wires at home, you will notice one side is ridged and the other side is not. It's bald like a tire. And the ridge side has a little ridge and you can see if you look at the sides or feel them that side is just plain this side is ridged okay but we're going to keep that tire analogy in mind because this is how you're going to set up your lamp you're going to remember and this is your mnemonic device the three b's bald black brass our unridged section, which is this one, is bald, like a bald tire. Okay? That connects to the black wire or the brass screw. Three Bs, bald black brass. But boy, I could come up with a lot of mental images for that, but bald black brass. I just do me a favor and just say it to yourself three times because then I'll know you'll remember it. The three B's, bald, black, brass. Now our ridge cord is going to connect to the white wire or the silver screw. But there's, and there's no mnemonic for that. I know, it's, boy, what a ripoff. But if you remember what this connects to, this one connects to whatever's left over. So it's always going to be easy all you have to remember is one bald black brass so here is our black wire right here bald 
black and we don't have to worry about brass because this has been pre-wired this housing has been pre-wired at the factory for us so these black wires are already connected to the brass screws inside the socket we would need that information if in fact we were going to wire it ourselves um, but as I say they did it for us bless their little hearts now, the ridged one connects to the white wires the white wires are connected to the silver screw so we are good to go we're just connecting whatever's left over okay now these wires just get stuffed back in here just stuff stuff um, if there is an easy way to stuff wires back into an electrical housing, I don't know what it is. So it's not like I can give you something quick and easy for that. Now, these are going to be screwed back in. And, boy, I should probably like sing you a song or something because this is just so boring. Actually, you don't want me to sing you a song. Um, now, I'm going to flip this over because I am right-handed. And when I was working on this before, I was using my left hand, which made it needlessly difficult for me. So we're going to deal with that now. And once we're through with this, we are good to go. We're just going to have to add our shade holder on the top. Remember that little piece of rod that I took off and it wasn't holding any wires. It was merely holding the finial holder for the shade. Now, I recently saw, I haven't seen this lamp since it's been set up with this shade in Jocelyn's bedroom. But I did, in fact, see a video she made in her bedroom. She wasn't in her pajamas, but I certainly did tease her about not leaving her bed to make the video. And that's when I saw it. And I realized that when I put this lamp together initially, I did it with a taller shade in mind. I had no idea what shade she would end up using, and I thought it was likely that she would use something quite tall, uh, simply because this is a rather big lamp. Turns out she's using a wide but short shade. So we need to make a change in that. All right. So here is our lamp. We get our cord pulled through. We're just going to set it over here for a moment. Now, this was the shade holder that was originally on the lamp. When I saw the lamp in her bedroom with the fiberglass shade, I realized that it was just too high. So this was the other thing I did. That made me change my clothes and take off my jewelry and put on the shatterproof glasses. I had to cut a piece of threaded pipe because I did not have a fancy finished piece like this in three inches. Now the next time I order lighting parts, I'm going to order one because this is a fast fix. But what I had to do was cut it off a longer pipe. That pipe was 10 inches it's seven inches now and we're just screwing this finial holder this is going to hold the shade and the finial so we're just going to pop that right into the opening up here and that shade is going to rest a lot lower now So that seems pretty good. 
Now, because this is so very, very tall, I'm going to hold it in my lap while I show you what it looks like with the shade. There. See, much better than when it was three inches tall. I think Jocelyn's going to be a lot happier with this. And we have our finished lamp project. Um, you know, her bad luck turned out to be our good luck, turned out to be her good luck. So we've just got to hope this doesn't happen again. And if it does happen again, we want it to break exactly the same way because this is a 30 cent part. The shade, $100 or more easily. The lamp, irreplaceable. It's, it's one of a kind. So all things considered, everybody got lucky. You got a chance to see the UL knot, rabbit ears. You know about the connections, the three Bs, brass, black, bald. Oh, by the way, in any order you want. So I think we made out pretty good today, especially since it was quite a surprise that we were going to have this particular video. So next time out, I think we're going to take, take a few minutes and talk about lampshades because there are ways for you to get good fiberglass shades at very reasonable prices if you know what to look for and you know what to do with them once you found them. So I think that'll be a future video. Meantime, thank you so much for joining me. Jocelyn gets her lamp back, no house fires, no real harm done. I would say all things considered, this was a good day's work. I will see you guys later.